Hello, my name is Tyrannotherium. I am a I'm a fan of paleontology, Dragon Ball, uh, Red Dead Redemption, GTA, and so many other stuff. I also study paleontology, um, modern animals, and Dragon Ball characters, and etc. I I do like my own thoughts on documentaries, movies, um, TV shows, and also um, I do live streams every Friday. Yeah, so, well, so, yeah. hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Sit Down by the Fire. Um, thank you, Tyranno, for actually doing this and being a last-minute replacement for Eric. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to... Me and Eric were originally going to be doing a game, and we're still going to do that because the show must go on. Um, this is just the chat pack. Uh, basically, it's just like icebreaker questions. And the link has been sent to other people, so other people might join us. But are you ready to play? I guess so. Okay. So let's see. The first question out of the chat pack, if the, if the cards cooperate. <laughs> um... Okay. Everyone hears discussions that they have considered boring. What topic puts you to sleep more quickly than anything? Um, the flat earth debate. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I can agree because, I mean, especially when you do it with Kenny, Although Kenny just is more fun to just make fun of with that situation. Um, for me, like, well, uh, unless it's like we're talking about like algebra or something. I mean, I tend to find any topic interesting. Like, I love history. I love, you know, movies, obviously. Um, so I'm going to say like algebra or something like that. You know, if you're talking like hardcore algebra to me, that's going to put me to sleep. Well, I do suck at math. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, next, next question, I guess. And, um, okay. hold on. We're Sorry, people. We're, I'm texting the last uh, po a possible guest. We don't know if he'll uh, join. So, all right. So, and do we? Oh, and a whole, um, we looks like we also might have another g possible guest too. So sorry, sorry, Tyranno, leaving your hand in a little, a little bit. That's all right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we'll see if we get more people, if not, okay. If all the drinking fountains could d dispense another liquid in a, uh, besides water, what would, do you want it to be? Um, I'm sorry. What was the question? If a drinking fountain could dispense another liquid in addition to w besides water, it's wording it weird, but it's meaning besides water. What what liquid would you would you want it to be? I don't know. Um, I'm gonna say like what could be really cool is like maybe um, I don't know a something that disputes Jack Dan just Jack Daniels or maybe Dr Pepper. That's what it's asking. I guess maybe Dr Pepper or maybe Coke specifically Coke Zero since by. I don't know. I like Coke Zero more than the original Coke, in my opinion. But yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many other liquids that it would be kind of fun too if it dispensed. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I wouldn't mind Pepsi, you know. 
Me either. As long I as mean, it's zero, but yeah. Oh. I, I guess even, even and even Tyranno's dog agrees. Well, my dog's just watching. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Um, besides your real birthday, which is another date on the calendar that you think you would consider the greatest day to be born? Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, I'm already born on a holiday, and it's, I mean, so I'm not going to lie. It, it It's great I because mean, I, because I get candy and cake. So, like, it's asking, like, what, ho what specific day would you want to be born on besides your birthday that you think would be cool? Um, the, I guess December. Christmas? Yeah, like, maybe Christmas or, like, the end of Christmas. Yeah, the only thing I, the only thing that I've heard that sucks about being born on Christmas is like some people sit there and say, "Oh, this is your birthday gift," or then, the, or, then the, or then they'll say afterwards, "This is your Christmas gift." Or like, I had a buddy of mine. Uh, they're I want to stress these people are divorced now, and I think you can guess why. Um, so, my his wife was born uh, December, like December fifteenth or something. So he got her a. He got her for her birthday a dustpan. Oh. And, and then for Christmas, he got her a broom. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, dude, probably not a good idea to give your wife cleaning supplies for her. So, I mean, it's okay to joke about that, but don't do it, right? Yeah, I guess. All right. <laughs> Out of all the great successful stories that you have heard or read about, who do you find most? What story do you find the most inspiring? Um, that's a really good question. Yeah. Uh, I guess. I mean, I guess um, Richard. Um, Richard Adams, who did Watership Down and the Plague Dogs, um, even though I never read the some some of the books of of the Plague Dogs, I did read a little bit of Watership Down though. But uh, Richard Adams kind of makes some really cool book stories and stuff. Yeah, I guess. Okay, I see where you're coming from. I think it's more like specifically asking stuff like. Um, like for me, I'm gonna say Walt Disney. I find his story really inspiring. The guy, you know, started actually right right around where I live in Kansas City. I mean, was very successful. He made Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Was that was successful? But then he lost Oswald due to oh, some copy to due to some copyright stuff. Oh yeah. Uh, like and then he made Mickey Mouse, and then look where mickey mouse started him it all started th with the mouse and like when he first started i mean he had basically five you know five dollars in his pocket wow. which you know five dollars was a lot of money back then that was basically like the equivalent of, of 20 bucks but even now i mean with look at inflation right now if you just have 20 bucks to your name what do you have really you know yeah and then look what he created with that $20. Uh, there's so many other people that I find inspirational. I guess, um, is there any paleontologist that, you know, maybe their story inspires you? Like, it's like, wow, they did that. Oh, boy. I have a lot of paleontologists. Um, <laughs> like, I used, I mean, I was a fan. Well, I mean, I'm still a fan. Like, Dr. Philip Curry. Uh, who studies Tyrannosaur um, specimens? Uh, well, yeah, well, Tyrannosaur. Well, um, um, yeah, I guess Tyrannosaur specimens, like he found in the um, in the Alberta um, Deer Creek. Um, he found the um, the Barn and Brown site where Bar Dr. Barn and Brown, who found. T-Rex, actually, the first T-Rex ever found, and uh, he didn't find, 
he didn't locate the site until like many, many, many years later, Phil Curry found the site and there was a picture of it on on uh, Barn and Brown took a picture of. He just didn't name the site though. Hmm. It's a long story. It's in the documentary called uh, Extreme Dinosaurs. If you get chased by dinosaurs on DVD, you will find the documentary. It's in the special feature documentary. Okay, cool. That that sounds really interesting. Um, so if you could, okay, if you could have time, the time and money, and could go anywhere for one for one month summer adventure of your choice, what would you choose? I would choose Texas because I have a lot of people from Texas and I have um, a friend of mine who has a Doberman and he does um, IGP and PSA training with a couple of his Dobermans. I also want to go to the fossil site in Texas where they found a homotherium, which is a, a, a scimitar tooth cat that hunts nothing but young mammoths and there's a fossil site there that's been dug out and uh, it's pretty interesting and there's also a dinosaur park there but most of all I would love to see my friend uh, I'm not going to mention his name but I really want to see my Doberman friend you could say that way he could also train me Okay. Because I did some bite work with my dog, like, actually a couple of weeks ago. But unfortunately, I'm probably not going to come back there because I already work. I'm working on Monday. So, and that was supposed to be my vacation at the time a couple of weeks back. Yeah. But Darn. Um, any, well, so, I mean, I think if I'm doing a month-long vacation, like, I think I would want to just maybe do some, do like a Europe you know, like a European vacation, you know, I mean, maybe visit London, France. Um, I mean, because I would love to see the Eiffel Tower, uh, Notre Dame. I would just love to see that in person. Um, I mean, maybe this is controversial, but I mean, I would love to visit Russia just for the history. You know what I mean? Interesting. Um, I mean, I think I would just want to visit Europe in general and even obviously even Asia too, because I mean, I would just love to experience that, that the, the cultures, you know, because I find different cultures fascinating and people, you know, Russian history, France history, you know, I mean, even China history and Japan history. I mean, Japan would be really cool to go to because I would love to see that Godzilla museum that they have in Japan, you know, and maybe even go to that ride that they have. They, there's a Godzilla ride that looks very cool in Japan. So interesting. Yeah. What amount of glory have you watched another celebrity? Okay. Sorry, it's it. Some of these questions, folks. Yes, I can read, but they word them weirdly. Okay. Um. So. It, it's basically asking, folks. Uh, it's it's wording it very weirdly. Uh, what celebrity would you like to live in the shoes of? I don't know what that means. Well, like what what celebrity would you like want to want to be if you could be for one day is what it's asking, you know? Um, like, like what paleontologist would you like to be for one day? I guess for you. I guess Tracy Ford. Okay. Is that the is that the is that the lip guy? He's the guy that uh, disagrees with the lipless and well with the lips okay yeah okay um but he also studies like a lot of like other things too not just like the theropods having lips and stuff but um 
for me, I mean, it doesn't specify folks dead or alive. So I'm going to say like, for me, like would be kind of fun is living in like somebody like Clark Gable or something like that. You know, that would be cool. You know, just because, you know, I mean, that guy, I have such respect for that man. Just all the stuff that I, I, you know, I've read about him and I've heard from other people who actually have heard stories about him. And it just, a lot of the stories I hear, it just makes me respect the man. And like, if I could just live in his, live upon him for one day, I think that would be such an honor. I mean, he's dead, but it doesn't specify dead or alive. So maybe that's, maybe that's cheating, but. I also would like to to see or Mike Tyson because Mike Tyson is a machine and he kind of reminds me of myself, angry and miserable at the time though. But Mike Tyson's a better person, and also of course that I never had fights with people unlike Mike Tyson, but I'm I still have like a hot head. I well that's that's interesting, yeah. Because I mean, as long as you. I, I mean, I guess as long as you don't pull a Mike Tyson on people, that's good. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. uh, don't don't bite don't bite anybody's ear off, and you'll be okay. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, let's see. What is the most exciting event that you have ever witnessed? The most exciting event that I ever witnessed. That's pretty interesting. Um, hmm. Hmm. I guess um, finally volunteering at, at the Fossil Park in New Jersey because I didn't know at the time that there was a Fossil Park. I thought it was just a myth. I didn't really care. Right. Until, until I met Dr. Kenneth Lacavera, who's been in a couple of documentaries, and one day I saw him at the park, and luckily I was wearing a Jurassic Park t-shirt, and I recognized the voice, and I hear, like, oh my god, you, you talked about Spinosaurus and stuff, and it's a long story, but I finally volunteer at the park, and that was back in 2019. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Uh... Hmm. You know, I mean, I'm going to say this, you know, um, probably for me, you know, when Disney was cool, you know, for me, it was, you know, seeing Fantasmic and, you know, just the fact that, you know, the fireworks show with that, the elaborate special effects they did, that was an amazing thing to see. I And I will always remember the one thing. And it made me, it, it still makes me smile to this day. Um, my baby sister, when she saw the show for the first time, she was like four. Uh. And the thing that she said was Mickey Mouse is real. <laughs> you know, and yeah, yeah, okay, she was a child, you know, so it's like, for me, that was the greatest event because it was, it made me just, it makes me think that, wow, you know, that that's when the, 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 the sense of wonder that Disney had was still there, you know, and that just, it make, made me, that makes me smile when I saw, I, I think of that, you know, and, and now looking back, like seeing that show, that show was amazing. Um, you know, so that's what I'm going to say. Um, so. Okay. What is one of the vacation destinations that many people think is just fabulous, but you personally have no desire to visit or revisit? Um, I don't know. Hmm. I mean... <clears throat> I'm not meaning this to be a bashing Disney thing because I, I do that enough, but just because what Disney does now, I have no I have no desire to visit Disney again. Again, you know, 
I mean, I'm not meaning this to be a bashing Disney thing, but you know, because that's those are some of the vacations that I remember growing doing as a kid where I had the most fun, you know. And now it's like if I'm blessed with children, you know, I don't know if I want to take them to Disney. You know, Disney sucks. Yeah. Um, well, it does suck now, but you know, it's more so the leadership. And I mean, I'm, so yeah, I'm not meaning this to be a bashing Disney thing, but okay. Um, if you could be the spokesperson for any product uh, at the market, what product would you choose? Uh, I guess Disney. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not that I, I, I actually agree with you because, you know, I mean, I would be, I, I mean, I, I would more want, I, I mean, obviously for those who know my channel, yes, I would like to be the chairman of the Walt Disney company or something. That's one of the reasons why I have mainly started to push this more is to be the chairman of this company, Junebug Films. Uh, because, you know, if Disney's not going to be Disney anymore, then, well, maybe I can do it, you know, was I yeah. saying. And, um, or even Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network of old. You know, that's mainly the goal of Junebug Films. Um, but no, uh, man, this has become a bashing Disney uh thing um folks please um i'm gonna say this please refrain from your interesting dialogue in your comments about this because this is not meaning to this is literally just sort of off the cuff you know tyranno does not know the questions beforehand and neither do i i'm literally reading them from a little plastic box and it's a game called the chat pack um, that me and my family play a lot, and it's just a lot of icebreaker questions. So, if in your not so humble opinion, what is the most likable quality? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, it's asking, it's wording it weird, so sorry about that. Uh, let me rephrase it. It's asking, what do you think is the most likable quality in maybe a person? Um, in a person, I guess, uh, like, maybe trolling, or I don't know. You think trolling's likable? I mean, no, likable. No, 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 no. I thought you said hateful. Oh, no, no, it's asking likable, sorry. Uh I'm going to blame my speaker for that one, say, making me say the opposite word. Okay, so. likable. Um, I don't know. I just... You know what? I mean, I'm going to say this. For me, probably the most likable thing is... I can't decide between two things. So, yeah, I, I, I'm cheating, folks. But um, for me, I think the most likable thing in a person is on a... I'm, this is going to sound weird saying this. Okay, so weird sentence. I think honestly, the most likable thing in a person is honesty and kindness. You know, because, you know, it's, you know, you should always be honest, you know, I think, or, well, I don't even think. You're like, that should be number one. You should always be honest and you should always be kind. And, don't take that for granted, you know, because, you know, any things that, you know, you say could reflect how other people feel about you or things that you do in the past, you know, that I've learned the lesson of, and I'm sure you have too, Tyranno, some things you said in the past can reflect how people see you in the future. Yeah. So I think that, you know, the best thing to do is just be honest and kind and, you know, not to, I'm not, it, I'm just quoting, I'm not preaching, but you know, it's just the quote, like the quote in the Bible, you know, the truth will set you free. Yeah. And that is so true a lot of the time. So, yeah. All right. Even though that I can be a douche at times, but. Well, I think all of, 
Unless if like if you're not a douche to me, then I'm I'm not gonna be a douche to you back. I think all of us can be a douche at times. Um Yeah. All right. What are your thoughts on what thought or sentiment would you like to have copied and put into a mil millionaire fortune cookie? Okay, so it's, I, th I don't, I don't know. This is see, that's the that's the thing. It's basically asking like, what what sent sentiment would you like to have in a fortune cookie copied in a fortune cookie? I mean, do you, if you just want to skip that question, because I think that one's dumb. Yeah, skip the question. Did you write these yeah. questions? No, um, it's a no. It's here, folks. It, it's a it's it's this. It's a it's a little game called the chat pack, and then you oh. read them. Oh, I thought so. You them for your no, no, no. I no. If I was going to ask you questions, I would ask you better questions than this but that's kind of the ra that's kind of the randomness of this game uh me and eric were like i said originally going to play it and uh you kind of became the uh understudy <coughs> in a good way okay you know you know that right yeah okay if you were what if you were safety if your safety was guaranteed, you could experience something considered very dangerous. What would you want to experience most of all? Um, experience most of all? Like something dangerous. If you could experience something dangerous and your safety was guaranteed, like, see, like, I don't know, like, I guess doing encounters with dangerous animals maybe i don't know yeah i mean I, I don't know like i'm i'm i can be adventurous and everything but like i try to avoid stuff that you know i like oh your oh your safety's guaranteed because with my dumb luck i'd be the one that dies <laughs> you know or something um like roller coasters yeah that's fine but you know and it's talking like skydiving or something like that, which I no, I don't want to do skydiving. Skydiving just because I have a fear. I I don't have vertigo, but I just have the fear of falling. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hate heights. So yeah. well, I don't even. I don't. I don't mind heights. I don't mind heights. Like I, I can do roller coasters and be up high. I mean, or but it's just the falling part, like a ladder. I, I, like I'm the type of guy on a ladder, slow and steady, slow and steady, and then pray to God, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. I know, you know? That my mom was forcing me to go up up a huge ladder, and I didn't want to, but she forced me anyway, and I was so mad at her that I even like, like I even grabbed dirt and I just touched her with it just to piss her off. Yeah. That's how much pissed off I was. If you could go back in time and meet any famous person in history and ask them one question, what question would you ask them? Assume that, and it has in parentheses, assume that you would be given a completely honest answer. Um... I mean, I guess, you know, I, I would, I, I, I guess, I mean, hey, you know what? I'm going to be honest. You know, if I could travel back in time and meet any celebrity, I think I probably would want to meet like one of the studio heads, you know, Walt Disney or, um, you know, um, Louis B. Mayer or David Oselznick and maybe just ask honestly just ask them for a job and then have me work at the studio and then uh, work my way up. And then maybe I take over the studio, you know? <laughs> and this is like someone from the past, right? Like someone who passed away. Yeah. yeah oh. Like his, it says history. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, Dr. Larry Martin, um, who passed away around 2013, uh, he, for those who don't know, Dr. Larry Martin is a paleontologist who studies saber-toothed cats and birds and and um, and etc. But mostly saber-toothed and birds. Um, my question would be for him: Is that, of course, um, was did saber-toothed cats bite? bite the throat which i know that yes it, we all know and secondly is that why do you think that birds are not dinosaurs because birds are dinosaurs you matter if you like it or not bird we have dinosaurs today and there are birds so. interesting yeah um there's so many people that you know you you wish you could ask them questions too like you know, I mean, I could even go back further. You know, like, how cool would it be to, like, maybe, you know, at least talk to Julius Caesar or Alexander the Great, you know, and just talk, you know, maybe, a, you know, like, may, and maybe, like, ask them, like, what do you think makes a good leader or something like that? that you know because like there's so many people like even general washington like what does he think makes a good leader some you know because i mean there's so many th th so many people in history that you could ask that question to you, you know questions to and you you wish you could get in the delorean and you know do all that stuff you know yeah Okay. If one of the national holidays had to be celebrated twice a year, six months apart, what, which one would you want it to be? National holidays? Yeah. What, what national holiday would you like to be, have celebrated twice a year, six uh, months apart? I guess Christmas. So that would be July. So, but I mean, you know, I mean, I guess Christmas is the obvious answer because it would kind of, I do kind of agree, you know, if we had something like another holiday type in Christmas, I mean, the 4th of July kind of, but you know. Yeah, but then again, there's people, there's some weirdos out there that say Christmas July, which I don't believe in it, but it's whatever. Yeah, um, I think that I would just say Christmas because people, I, I'm sure you've noticed this, Tyranno, people are just nicer around Christmas, you know? Yeah. I mean, despite despite all, all the other stuff that goes around at Chris, Christmas, but people just always seem nicer around Christmas. I mean, have you've noticed that, right? Yeah, some do and some don't, though. Well, a lot of people, let's just say, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there's always a bad apple, so. Yes, they are. Yes, okay. It, oh, oh my god, oh my gosh, this is. This is an interesting one. Okay, if you were asked to make a top ten list of the people regarded as the all-time greatest Americans who would you rank as third, second, and first spots? Um, like, does it have to be, like, presidents or whatever? Or No, I know. Americans in general. I mean... Uh, well, third would be Martin Luther King. Number two would be um, Abraham Lincoln. And number one, George Washington. I mean, I can't really deny that list. I mean, so I guess for me, yes, George Washington would be number one. I'm going to say Thomas Jefferson for number two. Um, because okay. without, yeah, because without him, I mean, we would not have the Declaration of Independence, um, which, you know, is probably one of the greatest documents ever written. And, and us, uh, all the other stuff he did for the country, you know, expanded the country to and everything but number 
And then number three, I'm going to say a controversial one, but I think that he would be. I, I, I think that he was a great American. Um, General MacArthur, uh, you know, who was a great commander in World War II and World War One. I. I mean, and it and is easily one of my easily one of my he- one of my heroes. So I'm going to say General MacArthur. I mean, my grandpa, and he kind of has a special place in me. My grandpa uh, was named after him. So, ah, huh, interesting. So I would say. I, I, I would put General MacArthur there. And the only reason that's controversial is because Truman fired him from the military because of a disagreement over how... How do I put this in a layman's term? Um, basically, the it was a disagreement on how the government the government should stay out of military command, let the commander command and not have the president get involved basically. And then he, I disagree. I'm going to say this. I respect Truman in a lot of ways, but I 100% disagree with him on what he did to MacArthur. I mean, that was wrong. It would have, so I'm going to leave that at that. That is another story for another day. If you disagree with me in the comments, just please keep, again, your interesting dialogue to yourself. Because I really don't want to get into an unnecessary debate with somebody in the comments over my opinion. Yeah, uh, with Abraham Lincoln and... Um uh doctor um 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 martin luther king yeah martin luther king i'm sorry i'm just i don't know why i'm mixing names up and uh and george washington with lincoln and well with abraham lincoln even though he's second he was the greatest people ever because he he wanted to free uh slavery which he did yes and, and with <laughs> and with the um, Martin Luther King, he wanted peace. Yes, I know. I, I... Peace, but unfortunately, he got himself killed by a stupid maniac. Mm-hmm. Well, and also with George Washington, he discovered America. Well, um, he was part of the revolution and the leader of the revolution. I mean. No offense, wrong phrase in the words. He was a leader. He, oh. he, he yeah, you know, he, he didn't really discover America. I mean, that was, there's a big, big debate about that, honestly. I mean, I, I, I mean, we don't actually know who discovered America, who stepped foot. I mean, we can okay. guess. I didn't know that. My he was bad. more of a leader, a leader. Uh, he, he led the troops to, I mean, just, I mean, I, I, I 100% agree with your list because, I mean, Abraham Lincoln, I mean, despite some of the stuff he did, you know, to the, to the Confederate soldiers uh, falsely imprisoning them that were Americans, I mean, I get it. At that time, it was wartime. So there was special circumstances that were needed. I disagree with that. But you know what? I mean, he's called Honest Abe for a reason. And I know, and like, Abraham Lincoln, honestly, honestly, probably was one of our best presidents, honestly. I mean, George Washington is definitely a good one, too. But he's the president that I think America needed at that time. You know, because he was president during the Civil War which was honestly one of the most treacherous time in America because it's the only time, I mean, knock on wood, it does not happen again. The only time on American soil that we were fighting other Americans. And so I think that he was the right leader for that time. And Martin Luther King, I mean, you know, he had... 
I mean, he really did have a dream. And, you know, that's the thing. You know, even if you don't, you know, agree with some of the stuff maybe Martin Luther King said, you know what? He was right. You know, he was right. You know, we we should we should all live by Martin Luther King's example of, you know, maybe just, you know, accepting one another for who they are, not the content of, you know, basically what he said, I judge a man on his character, not the content of his skin. And, you know, I, man, that could, I, that, that could just lead into a big topic, but I mean, I agree with your list and, you know, that is something that you know we could just spend a, a lot of a long discussion on um so yeah okay if you could be editor and chief of any magazine that circulates and having a significant input on the style and content of the publication, which magazine would you choose? So basically, it, it's asking in in a lo in short form, what magazine would you like to be the head of, and what what would you do with more with the magazine to maybe make it a better magazine? I think I know the answer to you, Tyranno. National Geographic. Yay! <laughs> really, I thought that. What What do you th thought it was? I thought you would say National Geographic. Oh, so, really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, what would you do to maybe improve National Geographic and maybe make it better? Well, bring back like, like, bring back like, <sighs> that's a really hard <sighs> question. I guess that like bring like the history of National Geographic, like the filmmakers, the photographers and stuff like that. and. That could be cool. Um, hmm. I mean, for me, Playboy. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, yeah, br yeah. Uh, bring back Playboy. Um, I'm kidding, folks. I mean, part of me's not, but yeah. But <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, let's see. Um, I think I would do like maybe like. Bring back Life magazine or Look magazine, you know, some like one of those type of magazines, and then maybe make it about like. Honestly, I think you could do it for like Life magazine. You could bring it back and then maybe make it where like it's about some of the good influencers on YouTube, and I mean, even though I wouldn't. I guess I wouldn't really do it too much because I don't really like TikTok because it's just Vine 2.0 to me. Uh, but and there's other reasons too. But um, anyway, I guess I would just more make it you know maybe actually have influences that I feel you know are actually having a good impact on this on the world and and the and the United States. You know something like that with Life magazine. Um, I mean, I, I think I would even, I don't even know if they still exist anymore. Cause I haven't seen them in a while. Um, do you remember Dis discover magazine? Uh, yeah, I think so. Do they still exist? I don't know. It's been a while. I would, I would do something with them too. I mean, there's all sorts of magazines. I mean, eventually I, I have looked into it. I mean, I would even like to have, you know, a possible Junebug Films magazine at some point, you know. So, I mean, just, cause, but that's like down, down, down to road stuff. Um, what do you do? What, what are you playing in the background there? Oh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Okay. Sorry, I'm just, I get bored. No offense. I, okay. Um, what is the most money you have ever found lying on the ground in a public place? Oh, I found uh, that, you know, funny you say that. 
a couple of months ago, I found $50, like, at the parking spot at where the mall I go to a lot. Um, there was literally a $50, and I literally found it, and I put it in my pocket. There you go. Finders keepers, right? Yeah. I mean... And I had you... found money plenty of times, but not a $50. And also, at, when I when I worked at the park, which I still am, I found these big giant silver coins at the park as well, and there were a lot of money. Mm, there you go. Um, yeah. I found I found a hundred dollar bill one time when I was walking, oh, sure. and and it was really funny because like I remember I remember that day. Because, like, I was walking my, me and my little sister were walking to Sonic. Hmm. And, like, I only had $20 on me. So, like, basically, it's like, hey, you know, try to be a little cheap, because I want to save back this money. And we kind of went the, I don't know why we did it, we went the long way. But I literally found $100, and I'm like, oh, sweet, you know? Uh, so um, instead of going, I convinced her, I was saying, hey, instead of going to uh, Sonic, we can go to, um, we can, we can walk the other way and we can go to uh, one of the, it's the Mexican, it's a pretty good Mexican place here in town. Like a Mexican so, restaurant? Yeah. I see. Okay. Man, this is going to be one of a. This is going to be one of those interesting questions. What is your favorite? Okay, I'm just going to... This is a multitude of questions, so I'm kind of just going to ask them, like, one at a time, and we'll go from there. Because it's like... It's like... It, it, it's like a series of, like, five questions, okay? What is your favorite time of day? Um... <laughs> I'm going to say my favorite time of day is probably sunset because sometimes the sunset can look very beautiful and, you know, you wish you could take a picture of it, but like sometimes your phone just doesn't capture it correctly. I love sunset and maybe just that, you know? Yeah. Something like that. Sometimes morning can be beautiful at times too. Yeah. Um, favorite. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to reward this. Cause I know what both of us are going to say. Okay. What is your favorite time day of the week besides Friday? Um, Saturday because Saturday I'm, I'm off. Yeah. I'm going to say, I'm going to say probably Saturday or, you know what? I mean, hump day is always good too. Wednesday. You know, I don't know why it, it just kind of Wednesdays always feel good sometimes. And, and Thursday as well, because it's like, it's the end of the week and it's going to be Friday tomorrow because I'm off yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. You got to sneak, got to sneak Friday in there. Don't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what is your favorite day of the year? Probably Christmas. Yeah, uh, Christmas. Yeah. What is your favorite? This is basically asking the same question. Uh, if you if you want to if you would think we already answered this pretty much, we can just skip this one. Um, what is your favorite week of the year? Oh, we just said that. I know. It, I, I know. Unless it's like asking, like, no, Maybe that's besides Christmas. I, I'm okay. It's besides, okay, fine, we can do that. Besides Christmas, what what would you say is your favorite week of the year? Um, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's good. Um, I mean, even though I, even though I'm, I'm getting to the point like where like I don't really like birthdays anymore, you know, but my birthday because. See, I get to experience a different type of Halloween than a lot of people. I mean, it's my birthday, but I also get to see, you know, 
children actually just being children you know and dressing up in costumes and you know yeah and, I, and like here okay okay my dad decided one year to bring to give children cookies for christmas and these were like the big cookies okay oh, shit. this little kid now he had to been at least i'm gonna say eight okay he sits there he sits there and says, Hey, mom, look at this big damn cookie. <laughs> and the mom sits there, watch your mouth. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, giving, I mean, I did love the turkey and stuffing and et cetera. And not to mention, like, like last year, um, we went to my aunt's place and we haven't been there in years because usually we always have thanksgiving at my parents house but this time we we had it because my mom had her leg sur surgery done so that's why like we had to go to my aunt's and actually matter of fact this year we're going to my aunt's again so that's pretty damn fun and i remember yes. that i had a um a roasted turkey leg and a normal turkey leg there you go cool um what is your we're basically okay the rest of pr pretty much it's saying the I, I mean favorite month of the year december oh month of the year um february oh. because my birthday month there you go well i'm gonna say i have a tie i mean ironic tie tie has a tie uh <laughs> I would say, I would say December or July because a Christmas and, but I would say July is more first because the Fourth of July is my favorite holiday. So, ah, interesting. Favorite season of the year. That's a tough question because it's like when I was younger, it used to be spring and summer. But now my body is telling me that I'm supposed to like the fall and winter now because I'm a fat ass. <laughs> um, I would say I, I I would say fall. You know, I I love the you know the the changing colors of the leaves, um, and but I also do like summer because. But then then I don't like summer because I live in Kansas. And the summers in Kansas get hot, hot. Yes. yes, I heard about that. Oh my gosh! I mean, sometimes. So, I mean, to this year. Well, this year alone was one of the hottest summers we've had on a long time. So, and here um, it was pretty damn hot. Yeah. So I anyway. I didn't even lawn mow for three months because it was so freaking hot, like really bad at, yeah. my, at my yard. Yeah. Um, let me know when, let me know. Um, I don't know what time it is and where you're at, but let me know if you need to. Uh, it's 10 to, 16 and my phone's almost dead. Do you need to, do you want to charge it or? Uh, no, I'm. Just, just, uh, and, uh, and, um, give me the last question. Okay. If you were given an opportunity to have an appearance with, to, with any person living or deceased, to whom would you want to learn from? Oh boy. I guess, uh, oh boy, that's a, I don't know. I guess Craig Packer. Uh, Craig Packer is a uh, lion biologist, and since lions are w my favorite animal since I was a kid, um, I would like to study more about lions with him. Um, I'm going to say, I, I, again, I guess, you know, I kind of already answered it a little bit, like, but I would love to learn from like Walt Disney or Louis B. Mayer. You know, basically, just how do how do they do it? Run run the studio, you know. But luckily, that's the great thing about documentaries is you learn, 
like how they how they did that like one of the great things i respect about walt so much okay if there was a problem if there was a problem in the company you know he didn't sit there and dilly dally on the whole manner if there is a problem he went to the direct source and said what's the problem and how can we fix it you know it, and it wasn't one of those wait till wait till this person does it wait till this person does it wait till this person does it on the board it was no there's a problem let's go to this person i mean to me that just shows okay there's a problem let's let's fix the problem and go you know and that's something i respect about up so much um but no um i guess since your phone's about to die uh we'll end this but thank you tyranno for showing up and uh you know um this was fun um if eric and i don't have another um if eric can show up on the next one um this no we i would love to do this with him because this was a fun would you say this was a fun game yeah it was okay yeah was yeah um not sponsored yet by june bug films but hey who knows maybe uh you can order this game at chatpack.com it uh, honestly um it's a very fun game i say to uh if you want to uh get to know people you know like it's a fun icebreaker game you know i would say especially if you have autism you know or anything it's a fun game to play maybe to kind of break the ice you know for people because i mean i get it you know sometimes we're shy and we can't exactly like maybe we need an icebreaker topic this is a great game to just do that with you know and, and honestly and honestly would you would you say that this uh, honestly uh would you say that this game is maybe good for the family to play yeah it's i think it's for any person in general yeah no it's a very fun game um this is the chat pack um it's made locally here in the midwest um i'm not not to say this is plugged or anything by them but if you want to go to chatpack.com and just order something order one they make little great christmas gifts um i got this for christmas and um i don't know where it is uh it must have just walked away something uh if any but hey if anybody wants to play this game with us me me and eric again you know um let us yeah. know i mean this could kind of just be a fun like sit down by the fire episode when we don't have an interview scheduled i mean tyranno would you play this game again sure i guess yeah okay so your phone's about to die but uh i would say an hour's a good long pod you know little web show so um thank you uh is there anything you want to plug on your channel that you're doing uh no um I I do live I do live streams every Friday. Um, I suggest you guys I don't know just watch me and do a live stream and yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Tyranno, I uh, I do share out his stuff on the community tab because he, I mean, I consider him a capo. You know, you're a you're you're a part of this Junebug Films, you know, family. So. And that's why you, you get shared out on the streams. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I like what you do. You, you have a very vast knowledge of animals and I could see you maybe eventually, you know, maybe doing stuff for national geographic or, you know, you could even have the, your own little show, like the craft brothers, right? Yeah, maybe except for that they're clownish or something like they act silly. I just like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't act silly. I know, but like, I think I could see you more maybe having a little sidekick, and you're the serious one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, I mean, come on, you could you could do a you could do a show with Kenny, right? <laughs> yeah, but Kenny would be like, no, no, I'm no, kidding. I'm, no, no, I'm kidding. Um, but no, um, I think that you know you. So thank you tyranno for showing up and uh this was definitely fun um we uh you know if so uh eric uh i'm just gonna say um i don't know if you you're announcing it publicly where you are but good luck 
Um, and you sit there and, you know, make sure that those, some, the people that where you're at know who, know that, Hey, you're Eric Vierthaler and you're coming. Yeah. Anyway, so, I will see you guys later. All right. Thank you.